Welcome to DataVids, guys. Today we're going to talk about transactions in Entity Framework Core. I'm going to spend five seconds explaining what a transaction is when it comes to SQL, MySQL, whatever, using C Sharp. And then we're going to show you how to do it using Entity Framework Core. Transaction is very simple. All a transaction in the database is, which applies also to Entity Framework because it's in the database, is when you make a query to insert or modify or delete you're changing the data in some shape or form and you have multiple statements if the first one succeeds and one of the subsequent statements fails you want to be able to roll back the changes rather than saving them so your choices are roll uh, commit the transaction as in execute all the statements make sure all the data is changed or roll back the transaction which is all the statements within the transaction will be like they never happened and the database will remain unmodified you're looking at the screen right now is a transaction, but it's not a manually controlled transaction. It's automatically controlled. You can see because these context.save changes, every time that you execute that, it saves to the database. And so since I have two statements, if I was to eliminate the first save changes, the context.save changes is going to put all the context statements that are executed before the save changes occur into a single transaction. There is a benefit to doing it this way, and that is that the system will automatically handle rollbacks for you as well. In other words, if this first one succeeds, the second one fails, you do save changes, it will not save anything to the database. It's still a transaction, and transaction.rollback is being called behind the scenes. Transaction.commit does not get called unless both of these statements execute successfully. Now let's talk about manual transactions because we do have a little bit more control than you think if you haven't done this before that is we can specify when we want to roll back and when we want to commit and then later on we'll talk about save points to manually control this transaction the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a statement to say we're going to use the transaction so we'll say bar my transaction oh caps lock is equal to and here we'll do context.database.begin transaction or begin transaction async. If you want to do that, if you're in an async method, then you would do await context.database.begin transaction async. Excellent. Now we need to wrap this in a try catch block. That way, if we catch an exception, we can roll it back. And ideally, you'd probably have more than two statements here to make this worth your while, but, anyways. So catch, and you would do exception X if you wanted to catch any exception. Or if you're not going to do anything with exceptions, you're just trying to swallow the exceptions so you can identify that it's happened, then you can just do it like this. Okay? So in here, we would do transaction.rollback, my transaction.rollback, because we're in the a rollback async if you're in an async method. And the save changes would again either be after one statement or after both statements, that's up to you. That does create a save point if you're doing manual transactions, but you can actually use the save point keyword, which will do probably more what you're expecting. We'll get more to that later. So I'm gonna put my save changes right here inside the try block. Now just a quick warning, the Microsoft documentation does tell us that save points are not compatible if you're using multiple active result sets and you're specifically using SQL Server. I know Entity Framework Core can be used with MySQL, MariaDB, SQL Server, in-memory SQL Server. There's all sorts of choices here, so that may not even apply to you, and you also may not be using multiple active result sets when you're using Entity Framework, so this warning doesn't apply possibly to you. But I'm going to show you what save points are, and we'll keep going. Now, remember we said earlier that you don't need to use, um, you don't need to manually control transactions in order to use transactions. You don't always have to use begin transaction. You could just have a bunch of statements and then have a single save changes, and that's a transaction, right? Um, so that's why kind of save changes technically is creating save points because you could have, you know, two statements, then a save changes, then one statement, then save changes, then three, and then, and when you, when it rolls back because it's encountered an error, the last time save changes was successfully executed, those changes are still saved to the database. When, you, when you're manually controlling the transaction, for whatever reason, that you decided to do that, instead of saying save changes, the way you could create transaction.create save point. So let's say in between these two statements, I said my transaction dot 
create save point or create save point async. And I could, I could be really specific here. I could say um, my, caps lock again, my save point one. And then let's say I had I'm another statement after this, which I don't, but I could say my save point two. So whereas save changes is more for automated save points, this is more manual. So then over here, when I'm deciding to roll back, I could say, which, which save point am I rolling back to? So instead of transaction at rollback, it's going to be rollback to save point. And I just put in that same thing, my save point two. It's kind of as simple as that. Just a final note to leave you with. Don't forget to do your save changes before you do your save point. It seems to help me sometimes actually creating the save point before basically creating a label to it. I don't really know what goes on behind the scenes with that. You might want to leave it in the comments if you do as to why that's necessary or not necessary sometimes. And also, don't bother with the create save point if you don't need it. It doesn't even work on half the architectures I've tried it on. Um, it even supposedly works on MySQL, but it's not working for me on MySQL. So, you know, especially it doesn't work in SQL Server with the multiple active result sets. If you find a place where it does work for you, great, but you don't need it to do save points. All you really need to do is save changes and you don't need to manually roll back because 99% of the time it's not necessary. It's 2022 guys. Let's do it the easy way. Hope this helps. Leave some comments. Talk to you soon. Bye now.